Hello, may the peace of Christ be with you. To the people of Salt Springs, Scottsburn, Lionsport Pastor Church, and to all of you who are joining us for worship today, I am glad to warmly welcome you. I am Jim Weber Cook, and I am here once again in the sanctuary of Scottsburn United Church. We come together for a time of worship while continuing to be apart. And our worship service today will include the Sacrament of Holy Communion. One of the blessings of recorded worship is that you can stop this with a pause or the stop button whenever you wish. So if you forgot that this is a celebration of communion as part of our service, or if you didn't know, you could just take a break right now and uh, stop and go and get a cracker or a piece of bread and some juice and come back and be ready to share with us uh, as this service proceeds. Our service today will include the musical gifts of our organist here at Scottsburg United, Stuart Monroe, and also of Evan Bailey on guitar. Evan is a member of this congregation. Danny McKay is the uh, clerk of session for Scottsburg United Church, and Danny is our lay reader today and will also be offering leadership with me at the table for the Sacrament of Communion. I continue to give thanks for all of the gifts that are brought together both in front of the camera and behind, uh, our tech person is Christine McKenzie. And uh, we offer this worship to you in this pandemic time as a way of being strengthened in our faith. The light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The light of Christ is within us when we are together and when we are apart. In this time, let us celebrate God's presence and let us celebrate God's love expressed through Jesus of Nazareth. In this time, let us remember the life and the ministry of Jesus and the life that we are called to live as his disciples. As a pilgrim people, let us continue searching for ways to live out our faith. And as a grateful people, let us rejoice in the gift of God's grace. Let us worship together now as we bow our heads and open our hearts to pray. O oh God, the wellspring of our hope, we come to this time of worship because you have invited us to come, to come with our longings, our gifts, our strengths, our searching. We come to share a common table, the table of Christ. Even though we sit at many different tables today, or perhaps a computer desk, or in an easy chair, wherever it is we sit now, we join together to celebrate your presence in our lives, and to remember Jesus who is proclaimed as the bread of life, and the cup of the new covenant poured out so that we may drink deeply of your grace. Grateful for this blessing, O oh God, we offer our worship in the name of Christ. Amen. The scripture reading is Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 37. Jesus has compassion to the people, and Jesus heals and proclaims the good news. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into, the, into his harvest. This is the word of the Lord. The beautiful hymn that Evan and Stuart are going to play now is entitled, Jesus, you have come to the lake shore. 
It's a hymn which speaks of Jesus calling us to share his ministry and to be laborers with him to bring forth the harvest of God's good. I remember early in my life discovering that some people didn't take communion on those Sundays, few and far between as they are in the Protestant tradition of our United Church of Canada when the sacrament was celebrated. In my childhood and youth, the thinking was that children were not welcomed to have communion. They were not welcomed at the table of Christ, nor were those who were not officially confirmed into membership in the Christian Church. I remember that when a person was old enough to confirm their baptismal faith, which for me was at age 14, then the gate was opened magically. And in those days, we were welcomed to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion in remembrance of Jesus. But I learned that even some people who were of age and who were confirmed members of congregations would not participate in communion and would not share with the rest of the congregation in receiving the bread and the juice. In fact, I recall from my days of my youth that during the preparatory communion hymn, some people would actually get up and they would leave the service during that hymn prior to communion. And if my memory serves me correctly, I think my grandfather was one of them. I wondered why some people would come to the table and some people wouldn't. I wondered why some would leave, or why some would stay, but even in the pew when the plate or um, the plate of bread and, and cups were passed to them, that they would just pass it along without taking one for themselves. Early in my ministry, I discovered a reason why some people didn't participate. It was because they didn't feel worthy. Somehow, these folks had the idea that the sacrament of the Lord's Supper was only for those who were, and I'll put it in quotes, holy. For those who were faithful enough Christians. They didn't feel that they measured up, or that they made the mark. And so they excluded themselves from this holy meal and from the sacramental life of the church. Of course, I have to acknowledge that the institutional church had done a very good job of excluding people through history and setting up rules and regulations about who could rightfully come to the table and who couldn't. But even some, some who were confirmed members of the church would not feel that their place was here at the table of Christ, would feel that they had to withdraw because they weren't worthy. Who of us is holy enough? 
Who of us is 100% faithful? Where does the cutoff line fall anyway? Is it 95% of the time we're faithful? Or 80% of the time we're faithful? Or, I know my son's community college course, it's 60% is the past, so if we're 60% of the time faithful, are we welcome then? And who is it that is to judge? I have had conversations in ministry over the years with folks who have harbored these ideas that they were not good enough, not worthy to share at Christ's table. And I have pointed out that we recognize in our tradition that Christ is the host at this table, and that Christ welcomed all to share God's grace during his ministry on earth. That was one of the trademark understandings of faith for Jesus, that God loves all, regardless of background or track record, regardless of nationality or religious tradition, regardless of our faithfulness or our lack thereof. You see, Jesus understood that we don't earn God's grace. It is a given. It is lavished on us as a free gift. And it is not withheld when we mess up, or when we do wrong, or when we sin. That understanding, I believe, is clear in the passage from Paul's letter to the Romans, which is one of the prescribed readings for this day. Listen to what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. You see, we are justified not by our actions or our inaction, but by our faith and by virtue of God's love, not our own virtues. We are justified and welcomed by the grace of God. All of us. We don't have to prove ourselves to be good enough for God. We are all worthy of God's love. That's what led Jesus to engage tax collectors and prostitutes in his ministry. That's what moved Jesus to include women and lepers and the poor and other marginalized people in his ministry. The brief reading from Matthew's Gospel, which Danny shared, indicated that Jesus felt, and this is an important word, he felt compassion for the people, not judgment. He cared deeply for them, and he felt their pain, their struggle. He acted to heal and to help them as he was able. With compassion, he taught them about God. And his God dealt in the currency of grace and forgiveness, more than judgment and damnation. The God of his life reached out in love to affirm and embrace all. And he also reached out his arms as he lived by his ministry. And he reached out his arms in his dying from the cross to proclaim God's love that would embrace those convicted criminals hanging and dying beside him. He affirmed that they too would have a place in paradise. At the table of Christ, we celebrate the grace of God. We remember Jesus by eating some bread and drinking some wine or juice as he asked his followers to do. The bread and the wine are outward, visible symbols of an inward, invisible gift. That is, the grace of God. The grace of God which was revealed in the life and ministry of Jesus and in the resurrection of Christ following his death on the cross. And so at this table, we have reason to celebrate. We affirm God's love, which welcomes us and affirms us each as a child of God. At the table of Christ, there is room for everyone. We do not have to earn it. In fact, we can't earn it. It is a gift. That is the nature of God's grace. It is a given. 
No matter how worthy or unworthy we may feel, at any given time in our lives, the love of God, which was made known in Jesus the Christ, is gifted to us. I reaffirm today that at Christ's table, everyone has a place. Everyone belongs. We are justified by faith, as Paul says, and we have peace with God. As we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of communion in this service, let us celebrate this faith and this gift of peace, which is ours. Shauna Robinson was our organist and choir director here at Scottsburn and at Lionsbrook United Churches for many years. It will be two years next month since Shauna's death. During her journey with illness, she continued to make and create music. And she wrote and composed a special piece during that time, which she entitled simply, Peace. I'm grateful to Stuart and Evan for sharing the gift of that music now. Ponder the peace that is ours in Christ. Know that you are loved and worthy of God's love by the grace of God. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. We're going to join at this table now in a time of prayer. And if you like to close your eyes for that prayer, feel free. If you like to open them, whatever is comfortable for you. But be gathered with us here as we pray together. Holy One, we open our hearts to your presence and we offer our prayers of gratitude. We celebrate your covenant of love, expressed time and time again through history. We remember your rainbow promise in the days of Noah. We recall your hope for fullness of life given to Moses through the commandments. We remember that you led your people out of a land of enslavement 
and liberated them to experience a new life after a wilderness journey. And we remember that in the fullness of time, your promise of grace was embodied in the flesh in Jesus of Nazareth, whom we proclaim as the Christ, the one who was so filled with your spirit that he became known as the Herald of Hope and the Prince of Peace, come to teach us and to lead us into your kingdom of justice, mercy, and truth. We long for that fulfillment of your kingdom, even though at times we lose our way and we lose sight of your promises. But you keep faith with us, and you keep on finding ways to speak your promise of love to our hearts. Even at this table, your word is spoken, and your covenant of grace invites us to taste of that promise again, as we affirm our faith in Christ who died, who was raised to a new life, and who comes again bringing healing, compassion, and justice to the earth. Holy God, who in the person of Jesus showed us a pathway to your love, who stands in solidarity with the oppressed, who weeps with the mourners, who dances with the joyful, teach us to be thankful, faithful people. And may our hearts and our ears and our eyes be opened so we may hear and see the needs around us and be moved to act with compassion as was Jesus. We pray for those who are grieving in the midst of loss, for those who are ill or alone, for those who live with fear, oppression, or poverty. We pray for those whose hearts are clouded by despair, apathy, or memories of painful experiences. We pray for those who are victims of racism and prejudice, and for a turning of this world toward racial justice and equality. We pray for the nations of the world in the struggle for peace and fairness, in the struggle to manage COVID-19, and in the economic and political challenges of our time. As we remember the needs of others in our prayers, we also remember the gift of Christ. On the night before his death, Jesus sat at a table with friends. He acknowledged their love and their fear, binding them together in suffering and in hope. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. And he said to them, This is my body. Take and eat. Whenever you do this, remember me. In bread we are reminded of his word, which nourishes us, and his life which was broken so that we may, might find our mission. Then he took the cup. He gave thanks and he said, This is the cup of blessing. Drink of it, all of you, and share the new covenant that is being poured out for you. Each time you do this, remember me. With this cup, we are reminded of the blessing of your love that held his joy in tears that holds our joy in tears. Loving Creator, we offer you our service and our lives in this symbol of bread. We offer up our laughter and our suffering in the cup of life. Bind us together, despite being apart right now. Bind us together in the one body as your hopeful, spirit-filled people. Send your spirit upon us now and upon the bread that we eat and the fruit of the vine that we drink, so that we may be faithful members of your company, a community of people united in Christ's love, who share the good news of your grace in our communities and throughout this world. Bless this bread to nourish our hope, and bless this cup to fill us up anew with the love of Christ, in whose words of faith, we now join to pray together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is for us communion in the love of Christ. And the cup of blessing which is filled is for us communion in the new life of Christ. Here is a banquet, a banquet of God's longing for you and for all creation. Here is the promise of God with us in Jesus to be celebrated and shared. Here is an invitation spoken in a word who became flesh and lived among us, who welcomes us to receive the gift of God's grace. Let us eat and drink that in our remembering and our sharing, we may experience the presence of the living Christ who has set the table with the blessing of hope and the promise of God's grace. As we take bread together, we remember Jesus, the bread of life. And as we take a cup, we remember Jesus as we drink from a cup of blessing. As we conclude this sacrament at Christ's table, we pause in prayer to give thanks. Please join me as we pray. God of grace, we give thanks for the celebration of your love here at Christ's table. We have filled our cups to overflowing and we have feasted on the bread of life. Though we are in different places, we are united in remembrance of Jesus and we are nourished in faith. We rejoice in your goodness and we are strengthened to fulfill our calling to share your good news in this world. So send us forth to bless your creation with love as disciples of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. June is the traditional time for graduations. And this year, of course, due to the pandemic, everything is different, including high school graduation ceremonies and activities. We have a tradition in our pastoral charge of honoring the graduates at worship near the time of their graduation each year in June. And that is important change. 
So next weekend, as part of our service of worship, we will be celebrating the class of 2020. And we will take time to honor those from our congregations who are graduating from high school this year. Even though they won't be able to be with us, we want to celebrate them and their accomplishments and to wish them well. Now, as you have been nourished at the table of Christ, go in faith to share Christ's ministry in the world, healing and helping with compassion and sharing the good news of God's love. And may the grace of God attend you. May the love of Christ direct you. And may the Holy Spirit keep you this day and all your days.